will be presenting the new initiative coming from South Korea that actually completes the ASEAN Plus 3 uh, cooperation. May I now invite Dr. Jin Yong Lee of Kyung Hee University. Where is she? Yes. Before I begin, let me tell you a little about myself. I'm Jin Young Lee, and a research professor from the Center for International Development Cooperation at Gyeonggi University in South Korea. Today, I will today I will be discussing South Korea's new southern policy and the international development cooperation in. ASEAN, here after Korea, South <coughs> Korea, Korea. New Southern Policy is uh, as one of the main diplomatic policy initiative of the Moon Administration aims to strengthen cooperati cooperative relations with the country of ASEAN. Thank you. Yeah. In 2017, President Moon announced the new Southern Policy, which aims to substantially elevate the partnership between ASEAN and South Korea to a new level. This policy is built upon the three P, that is the three pillars of people, prosperity, and peace corresponding with the three pillars of ASEAN community with people placed at the center of the policy. What does the Moon administration's new certain policies mean for Korea's development of its relations with Southeast Asia and ASEAN? Uh, Korea's interest in Southeast Asia and ASEAN is far from new. Even before Moon came to office, Korea was already Southeast Asia's second largest trade and investment partner, and his predecessors had also sought to build upon <coughs> ties with the region, recognize its importance in terms of managing changes such as those related to relations with North Korea and advancing opportunities such as source building out of middle of countries with uh, power diplomatic efforts. This session, I'd like to describe and analyze this initiative in the context of a contemporary international development cooperation in ASEAN. Before start, I will show you this table to present an overall picture of Korea's relations with Southeast Asian countries from 1989 to 2017. Korea officially launched a dialogue with Southeast Asia countries in 1989, after which ASEAN Plus 3, APT, was formed in 1997. Just last year, 2017, an ASEAN Culture House was uh, inaugurated in Busan. This paper deals with the policies of successive administrations from President Kim Dae-jung to Park geun over the later interval from 1998 to 2016. My research question is what significant changes in Korean policies toward the Southeast Asia we can trace it across the past four administrations from 1998 to 2016. For this, my presentation today is a compromise of three parts. First, I will be presenting a very brief literature review on foreign policy and ODA. And second, I will analyze in four cases regarding foreign policy initiative of the successive Korean administrations from 1998 to 2016. And finally, I will summarize it of these studies findings. Uh, there has been much discussion 
uh, font is so similar, so, so, right. so there has been so much discussion of the state's foreign policy and the ODA programs. Um, a number of academic papers have explored those questions like does the nation's foreign policy affect ODA or why is aid given from donor states? Traditionally, the purpose of aid in the international relations is explained in relations to one of four aspects from a macro perspective, realism, Marxism, liberal internationalism, and constructivism. The literatures on aid effectiveness and allocation, frequent, allocation frequently highlight the role of politics in explaining aid allocation. The political variable in variables employed in these liter literatures typically focus, focusing on relations between the donor and the recipient countries. And domestic political, political variables of donor countries are, however, generally absent from this analysis and the role of politics in, is cast at the international level as first step. But I will focus on the work of uh, Rankast and Tingley, which highlights, uh, highlights relations between state diplomatic policies and aid motivations. Several studies suggest that aid is primarily motivated to assist the poor, the poor, but substantially evidence points to political, strategic, and welfare interests of donor countries as the force behind aid programs. Boone, uh, for example, in particular perspectives identifies, it, identifies the ways in which the motivation for giving aid very giving aid very very donor states. Rankes the observers that state aid motivations involve individuals and can be difficult to observe. Can be difficult to observe, yes. Also, Rankes and Tingri emphasize that political parties in our states and the domestic political institutions play an important part in shaping foreign aid, foreign aid policy. This is also a significant consideration in this study. In my paper of Korea domestic policy in relation to ODA for Southeast Asia. So going back to my research question, how government foreign policy actually affects ODA in the same state? In order to compare the compare and analyze the policy of successive, successive Korean administration toward ASEAN member states, I collected the data and divided my social network analysis of newspapers, newspaper reports into two or three stages. Survey data were collected from website, Dunga Ilbo, newspapers website, Hangyore and Gyeongyang Shinmun, and the timeline is from 1990 to 2016. The reason that I collected uh, data from 1998 is the real beginning of a co cooperation was under President Kim Dae-jung. Uh, he personally had knowledge and interested in <coughs> Southeast Asia, which was built, built through his personal interaction with uh, Southeast Asia readers, such as uh, Aung San Suu Kyi of Myanmar and the domestic movements. So Kim, President Kim was elected president in the midst of the 1998 ASEAN finance crisis, which set his policy priority, that is, ASEAN Plus 3 APT or APT initiated by ASEAN was regarded as a good instrument to overcome the economic crisis through regional cooperation. And President Kim invested a lot of his political will to promote ASEAN 3 regional cooperation. This brought Korea close to ASEAN and ASEAN countries. And what are the differences between the Southeast Asia policies of Kim and the three presidents who succeeded him over the past two decades? In, um, in an attempt to answer this question, I have used the computer-assisted quali qualitative data analysis software, Atlas TI, which is particularly useful in mapping node-to-node -node relationships. And data can be linked to code, and codes can be linked to each other, or so code familiars or groups. And 
from now, from now, and I show you four, four pictures for so for result from software. I use this software program for frequency <coughs> analysis to identify the major countries engaged with by each administration. And uh, the frequency analysis focuses on how many times the president visited during his tenure. And the second step is the number of visited by the foreign ministers by the, administer and the administration. And third, the number of visited to the ASEAN related events and meetings. I turn next to analyze which topic are connected to ASEAN for each administration. At this stage, the analysis method shift to, to content analysis, but framed in relation to network relationships. Figure one to four illustrated the president attendance at ASEAN meeting and his or her visit to Southeast Asian countries as mapped by the Atlas TI software. This event includes ASEAN Summit, for example, ASEAN Summit, ASEAN Plus 3 events, ASEAN Regional Forum ARF meetings, and so on. And looking across the, these four figures, one, figure one, figure two is President Ro and President E and President Pa. It's from one Two, four figures. Looking across these four figures, it appears that there has been no consistent approach to Southeast Asian countries. It, it is a very important point in my paper. And um, of course, each government has its own policies to emphasize. At the 1990A, the Kim Dae Jung proposed, proposed um, EAS. EAS means is East Asian Vision Group, EABG, and which was to present the recommendations for future East Asian cooperation at the APT Summit of 2001. And uh, following on from the EABG's recommendation and the Kim's proposal, the first two East Asia Summit meeting was held in 2005. Two EAS and Kim's made us the first Korean administration to propose an alternative institutional region, regional framework for Southeast Asia. Um, significant event presented by Figure 3, President Lee. President Lee myung mentioned of officially development assistance at the at the um, ASEAN meeting in Indonesia two, the, 2009. There there, Lee Myung, President Yi, also announced the, the establishment of a new ASEAN initiative under which Korea will make an effort to conclude free trade agreements with other countries in Asia. So what is the new ASEAN initiative from President Lee, and how was the difference from Moon's new southern policy? It's um, by another question in this paper. So President Lee, expanded Korea's diplomatic horizons to the broader Asia region in 2009, uh, in rising the scope of uh, cooperation from the economic focus to one also include security issues, cultural exchanges, and energy and environmental development considerations. As uh, announced uh, during uh, President's tour, Southeast Asia in March 2009, the new Asia initiative aims to aimed to enhance substantial cooperation, cooperation with all the countries of Asia and ASEAN in particular. The red circle is the point 2009, the new Asia initiative uh, announced from <coughs> President Lee. In order to further support this paper's argument, I have also I have also collected and analyzed another kind of document that is presidential speeches mentioning ASEAN. For this, I have been able to across examples for every administration discussed here, except for except for that of President Park. 
because the website not provided the backness data. So thus, table includes the material for the Kim Dae-jung, Noh Moo-yeon, and the Lee Myung-bak administrations, administrations, and respectively, 23, 23, two thirds, and Noh Moo-yeon is nine, and Lee Myung-bak is nine. From this result, it is clear that E and those policies were more narrowly, narrowly focused on economic concerns about ASEAN. So the world, world is changed because uh, President Kim is focusing North Korea and President E is focusing green growth. And now my uh, final figure is present data on the ODA flows from Kim to Park's administration in seven South Southeast Asian countries, including Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Vietnam. Here I explain the net flows of ODA from 1998 to 2016. After 28-2008, the amount of ODA was increased and Korea entered into OECD dock membership in 2010. Of course, Lee myung -bang mentioned ODA in 2009 in Indonesia, but particularly in relation to Indonesia and the new Asia Initiative Plan. However, there's no, there's do not appear to be any strong correlations between the ODA volume and foreign policy. And the analysis of presented above can rather be read to support the argument that while a succession of South Korean administration have presented various policy initiatives for strength relationship with ASEAN member states, their motivations for this were directed less toward actual engagement with Southeast Asia than they were toward political considerations of relations with North Korea. Over time, I found a good evidence for this finding and the case studies. First, I have confirmed that a wider, wider variety, variety of issues are being addressed, such as green growth, ODA, and so on. As I'm meeting deals with North Korean issue, no place of Korean and North Korea. Second, South Korea's relations with ASEAN is improving with a greater increase in cooperation partnerships, <coughs> including a more comprehensive range of projects. While Moon, Moon <coughs> President Moon proclaimed a new certain policy, it is difficult to identify what in particular distinguishes it from early patterns of Korean engagement with Southeast Asia. Rather, it appears that the region has been generally seen by the past for administration as a means to strengthen relative advantages in relations with North Korea. In this way, President Moon's new Southern, new Southern policy looks quite similar to the new Asia initiative of Reese administrations. And in July 20, uh, this year, July, South Korea's foreign minister, ministry announced that it is preparing, preparing new policy for ODA. The United States also plans to establish the international development cooperation in response to China's Belt and Road Initiative. As part of the which China has established and the international cooperation, international development cooperation agreement to align foreign aid and cooperation function. Therefore, <coughs> Korea's new certain policy or the <coughs> new third or the policy is one way to use foreign aid as a major means of uh, diplomacy and security. <coughs> Thank you for... Thank you very much, Dr. Jin Yun Lee. That completes our five presenters, and I have been asked to give you a 10-minute health break. <laughs> so we can take 10 minutes. Uh, please, uh, coffee is outside. The restroom is there. Those who want to smoke can get out of the building. Uh, let's resume after 10 minutes. Thank you very much.